Today, I'm gonna to show you how to create a simple animation in Photoshop. Hey there, and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's video, we're gonna show you a really cool, simple animation that you can make in just a few minutes in Photoshop. Now, I'm imagining this for like an end of a short video or something like that. We've got the words, the end, kind of animating with a little rocket ship. So these sort of things are incredibly simple to do. Let's jump into Photoshop and show you how it's done. So the first thing we're gonna do is drag our sample image right here into Photoshop. Now you can actually download this on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. It's completely free. That way you can follow along with this tutorial. So the first thing I wanna do is get my letters cut out. Uh, actually super simple because they're yellow on a blue background, we're gonna select them by color range. So let's go to select and down to color range. And then you can just use your eyedropper here to select the colors you want. So in this case, I'm just gonna click on the yellow. Now you have this fuzziness slider that will select more or less. So we just wanna crank that all the way up to the right. And then I'm gonna use this little plus icon to make sure we select the shadows also. You know, we wanna make sure that the shadows are selected. That looks great. Let's go ahead and hit okay. And now at this point we have the yellow selected, but I'm actually gonna need the blue selected as well. So let's go ahead and grab my marquee tool, just a rectangular marquee. I'm gonna hold shift down and then just trace right over top of my letters and that's gonna add them to my selections as well. There we go, each one of these, boom, we are good to go. So the next step I recommend doing is just refining your edge a little bit. So we're gonna go to select and then down to select and mask. There we go. And then here in your settings for select and mask, let's just choose overlay, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a little bit of feathering and a little bit of contrast. All right, we'll just bring that right back down to zero. That's just gonna make sure the edge is nice and smooth and everything plays well together. There we go. We're gonna output this to the layer mask here. That's super important and hit okay. So now you can see we have each one of our letters cut out. So the next step is actually gonna be getting each one of these letters on their own layer because we wanna animate them separately. It's super easy to do. I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that you duplicate this layer. Boop, there we go, because we're gonna apply this layer mask. So now we're gonna right click in here and go to apply layer mask. And now you can see we just have a layer with simply the letters and no mask at all. This is gonna make it a lot easier to cut everything out. Before I start that cutout process, I just want that blue background back again. So what we're gonna do is make that invisible. I'm gonna hold shift and click on the layer mask here, and that's just gonna temporarily disable the layer mask we made earlier. So now we're gonna grab a solid color fill layer, and then let's hit okay. Let's just make that invisible real quick. We'll double click right here on the solid color fill layer, double click right there, and you get a little eyedropper, boop, and you can see I just sampled this blue color. Hit okay and we'll turn that blue color back on and then we have our letters on our blue color. Now I know there's no shadow or anything like that so it doesn't look completely real right now but don't worry in just a second we're gonna add that. So the next thing we're gonna do is use our lasso tool. We wanna use the polygonal lasso tool right up here in the top left and we're just gonna go ahead and start cutting out each one of our letters. So just make a selection around your letter and then hit Control or Command X that's gonna do cut, just like cut and paste would be in any program on the computer. But this time, we're gonna paste this in place. Okay, so we're gonna hit Shift Command V, and that's gonna paste it on our new layer in the exact same place. All right, and then we're just gonna call this T for T. <laughs> Makes sense. So now let's go ahead and select out this H. Boop, we'll do the same thing. So Controller Command X, create a new layer, Shift Command V is gonna place it back in place. So now you can see each one of these letters is on their own layer. All right, we're gonna speed it up and I'm gonna do the rest. We're good to go. You can see each one of these layers is now its own letter, which is gonna be perfect for animation. So the next thing I wanna do is add my drop shadow back again to make it look like three dimensional. So let's go ahead right here where we see just any one of these layers will work. We're gonna go in this case to T. You can double click in this gray area or go to FX and to blending options. So here are blending options. We're gonna scroll down to the bottom and I'm gonna go ahead and turn on a drop shadow. 
Now for the drop shadow, I don't want to use black. Here's a little secret. Uh, black and white will just kind of like desaturate the colors in your image. So I'm actually going to use a color from, you know, from my image and then we'll just drag that down a little bit. Okay. So it's like kind of a saturated blue. There we go. And we'll just bring our distance up a little bit there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just make that at the top. And I'm doing my best to imitate the light that was on this to begin with. So one drop shadow looks pretty good, but personally, I'm always into adding two drop shadows to give it a little bit more definition. So let's just go ahead and hit this plus icon. It's going to duplicate that drop shadow. And this time we're just going to lower the opacity a little bit. I'm going to lower the size and the distance. There we go. And that's just going to be like a little bit closer. So you can see turning this off and on, we have a close drop shadow and this one we're going to lower the opacity on this one and bring up the size a little bit. Now you'll be able to download this PSD on flurn.com. Just follow the link in the description right down below. That way if you're like, oh, I want to get the exact same settings that you had, no problem. But you can see how having two different drop shadows is actually really nice. So one of them is like your close drop shadow where the object touches the ground. And then the other is the far away where it actually kind of like hides the light from the background. All right, well, that looks great. Let's hit OK. Now, the great thing about this is let's go ahead and just minimize this. You don't have to do that individually for all of your layers. You can copy and paste. Let's hold Alt or Option and you just click on this FX. There you go. And as you can see, I've got a little copy icon there and it just brings it down. So again, all you have to do is hold Alt or Option, click on FX and drag that to another layer. If you don't get it right on the other layer, it might create a layer copy like it just did for me. So um, you know, it might take just a little bit of doing, but there we go. You can see we just copied it from one to another. So we're really well set up now. I'm going to go ahead and group all these. We're just going to call this the end one, and I'm going to hit control or command J to duplicate it. And that's going to be the end two. So believe it or not, we are ready for our animation. So for our animation, we're going to go to window and down to timeline. There we go. And there are a few different ways to create animations in Photoshop. There is a video timeline and a frame animation. Frame animations are a lot more simple and that's what I suggest using for this sort of thing. Let's go ahead and just shrink this up here and create our frame animation. Super cool. Basically you have these different frames and what you see in the frame is basically what's just visible in your layers. So, this looks pretty good for frame number one. We're just going to hit this plus icon and it's going to make a new frame. And in this case, I don't want uh, I don't want the end one visible. I want the end two visible. And I'm going to hit control or command T on the end to each one of these letters. And I'm just going to rotate them a little bit. Maybe just move them around a little bit, too. So there's no overlapping. <laughs> I say that, but I just made it overlap. All right, there we go. That'll just move over there. Control or command T, we just rotate that around. So I'm just kind of having some fun with this. There we go. The D can go over there and we'll rotate that around there as well. Okay, so the end two, you can see it's just different from the end one. Like if I stack them up, you can see yeah, they're in different spots. So what we want to do is here on our first frame, we want just the end one to be visible. And here in our second frame, we want just the end two to be visible. So when we switch from frame to frame, boom, there you go. You can see that animation plays and you can kind of like compare and contrast here how that looks. I think it's looking really cool. Now down here at the bottom, you can set delays. See where it says zero seconds right here. I'm going to hold shift and click on both of these and we're just going to go to one. So it's going to be one second and hit the play play button and it's going to last one second. Now, I think that's kind of nice. I'm going to shorten that up a little bit to 0.5. There we go. So that's pretty cool. I got to say, I think for this second frame, I want the end to just be slightly. Yeah, this way. I don't I didn't want it to be just the same. There we go. It looked kind of like in the same rotation as the D. 
So you can make these adjustments and your animation will stay as it is. So if this is all you want, you can go ahead and render out your animation, but I wanted to take it one step further. So I'm gonna bring in a couple of different icons from a website called The Noun Project. So we're gonna to link to that in the description right down below and on flurn.com. So we can't provide these, but you can actually download them for free from The Noun Project. All you have to do is create a, uh, an account there and I highly suggest it because it's a great place to find icons. So we're gonna go ahead and drag in our two PNGs that we got from the Noun Project. We have a rocket and a star. So uh, sometimes if you try to move these around, the, it might not let you move it around, like if you're on a different frame or whatever. So you can always create a new frame if you run into that little issue. In this case, it worked properly, so we're good to go. Okay, so our rocket, we're gonna go ahead and start this right down here with frame one. And our star, we're gonna put this over here I want these to be yellow, and there are a few different ways to do that. One of the easiest ways to do that, honestly, is just go to FX, and then we're just gonna go over to Color Overlay, boop, and then you can just choose your color, and I'm just gonna grab my eyedropper right from there. And then we know we can just copy and paste FX from one layer to another, so we're gonna do that. Just hold Alt or Option to copy our FX over to the star, and look at that. So this star I just wanna duplicate a few times. Controller Command J, there we go, we're gonna make it a little bit bigger. All right, and we're gonna do one more here and make it nice and small, and that's gonna rotate around. Okay, so all of these are gonna go in their own group. We're gonna just call this stars 01, and surprise, surprise, we're gonna duplicate that. Okay, so we're gonna call this stars 02. There we go, and then stars 02, everything is just gonna get a little bit of a rotation on it. So it's gonna rotate similar to the text. So we've got a little bit of like consistency here, right? There we go. Perfect. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and animate our stars. So uh, our first frame, we want stars 01 to be visible. And our second frame, I want stars 02 to be visible. It's really that simple. So if I hit play now, we can see the text is, our, the text is animating and the stars are animati animating. Look how cool that is. Now, for all of these, we've just had two states, right? Like on or off. But the rocket, I want to move through my scene. Uh, so I actually want to bring in a few different states for that. Like it's gonna go one, two, three, four, right? So we want four different frames. So what we're gonna do is simply duplicate our frames. So I'm gonna take this frame and hit the plus icon and we're gonna put it over here. There we go, so one, two, three. Then we're gonna duplicate our second frame and then put that on the end. So one, two, three, four, okay? Now, all I have to do, there we go, let's go ahead and group the rocket. All right, believe it or not, I have to make four rockets. <laughs> That's just how frame animation in Photoshop works. You gotta make four of them, because it's like, unfortunately, the way we're doing it, you can't just animate, like, be here for this frame and be here for that frame. Some programs allow you to do that in a video timeline in this program, you could do that, but it's actually just more simple, in my opinion, to just create four rockets. <laughs> kind of silly, I know. But basically, we just need to animate them throughout the scene. So this is our first rocket, boop, and this is just gonna start right down here. There we go, we'll go to our second frame, and that's where we want our second rocket to be. Our third frame, and that's where we want our third rocket to be. There we go. And then our fourth frame, that's where we want our fourth rocket to be, all the way off to the end. So one, two, three, four. Because isn't that pretty cool? I'm gonna just crop this entire image in just a little bit because I'm like, we don't need that much room. Uh, fantastic, my uh, rocket for the very end is now off the screen. So I just gotta relocate these, but you can see changing up your animation is pretty simple. All right, so just bringing in each of these there we go, so one, two, three. Oh, see how it jumped up a little bit? So I gotta bring it back down. Come on down. There we go. Two, three, four. All right, all these have the same frame delay. Now all we gotta do is hit play. How fun is that? So if you were making like a little short video about you know, I don't know, with your kids or something like our trip to the moon or something like that. You can make your own end screen like this and then do credits and all kinds of fun stuff. So super, super fun and easy to do. So the last thing we wanna do obviously is save this out. 
Now we're gonna show you how to do that in two different ways. We're gonna show an animated GIF, which is super fun. You can just text that to your friends and it'll play automatically. And we're gonna show you how to render this out as a movie. So let's start with the animated GIF because in my opinion, it's a little bit more versatile. We use them all the time. You just wanna go to file down to uh, export and then save for web. So save for web, this is super helpful dialog box. It's gonna take a second because it's at this point, it's kind of like a huge document. All right, so let's hit minus a couple times to make that smaller. The deal with GIFs is you don't want them to be too big because they take a lot of file size and it's gonna take forever to load on a website. So I'm gonna just make my width, it's like 5,000 pixels. I'm gonna make it 800, okay? So it's just gonna scale it way, way down, which is exactly what we want, okay? So your GIF isn't gonna be like super, super crazy big. Then your looping options we wanna choose forever, okay? And then you can even hit play right here in this dialogue to see how it looks. And then my personal favorite thing about this is this preview button here down on the bottom left. If you click on this preview button, it will actually load your animation in whatever web browser you choose. So I'm seeing this in Google Chrome in this case, and I can see if it works and it looks good. And it does, it looks great. So now let's go ahead and hit the save button, put it wherever you want, and you're good to go. So now it's time to render out our video that you can put in a larger video sequence. So let's go to file down here to export and we're gonna go to render video. There we are, you can choose wherever you'd like it. In this case, we're gonna use Adobe Media Encoder. Our format is gonna be H.264, that's really great for streaming. High quality, document size, uh, no thanks, <laughs> that is way big. So let's just try 1080 and hit enter and you can see I've got the little spinning thing it might ask you for some permissions in this case. And we have our little uh, export window letting us know that it is exporting. All right, we just rendered out our video. Let's go ahead and hit play. And here you can see, we've got our animation. Now, of course, you could continue to add frames if you wanted to. For instance, if you were putting this in an animation and you just wanted more, you could simply just shift click some frames and drag them to the new frame icon and boom, your animation is twice as long. It's still gonna loop, you don't have to do any more work, but it's a little bit longer. That might be a little bit more appropriate for video, but if you're just doing a GIF, that's gonna loop automatically anyway, so you don't need to do that. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. Let me know in a comment right down below what you thought. As always, if you wanna get a free tutorial from us every single week, make sure to hit on that subscribe button. And if you wanna learn, I'm talking crazy awesome Photoshop skills, compositing, retouching, all professional level stuff, access to every tutorial we've ever made, check out Flurn Pro. You can get an exclusive discount and find more in the description right down below. Thank you so much. I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.